It is finally here. It a lot of the thought. epic battle between you got Bakugo and all night, didn't you? Bakugo. <laughs> Using Deku as like some kind of medium for his own issues. When you and I were kids, we both wanted to be like All Might. But I had the potential. Then somehow a little nobody like you was singled out by the person I admire. And that's most. exactly what he's missing. And I didn't even realize it. That was a very well timed name name card, quirk quirk card thing. We are settling this. Right here. Right now. What exactly are we settling? You know what I mean? I want to know what made All Might give his power to a loser like you. Let me see for myself. Well, there's something cool about that. At least he's very clear on the question. Up to him you know? more than I did. That, that I think is the right question. But that's not the answer. Does it mean everything I've done to be like him is wrong? He's like on the precipice of something kind of great, you know? Two kids, no both admiring reason, All Might. And coming away with very, very different interpretations of what it means to be like him. Pretty epic face-off there. <laughs> a lot of hype for this fight, for sure. As far as predictions go, this is a Bakugo transformation episode, right? So that, I think, is really what's at stake, is Bakugo getting the lesson he needs. I mean, he's almost there, the way he's talking about things. He recognizes there's something he's missing. The pain he's experiencing, I think, comes largely from the fact that he has this single interpretation of, of All Might and what it means to be a hero and a very concrete worldview that is limited. And the world is basically showing him that that's not it. You can't will the world into matching your view of it, you know? You must adapt your view to what the world is. The longer he drags that out, the longer he clings to the idea that, no, I've always been right, I'm right from the beginning, this is who I am and this is what I need to be, yet still continues to see people surpass him in ways he desires, there's going to be a lot of inner conflict. Critically, I feel like the show is very self-aware and is exploring this issue in more ways than one. Like, one thing I've been thinking about a lot since all Might's battle with All for One is the fact that actually it's not his powers that make him heroic. At least in terms of a viewer trying to take things away, you know? What makes him heroic is his outlook and the fact that his actions always match his outlook no matter how difficult that is and no, no matter what the risk to him. The fact that he can so clearly align himself with positive virtues that if widely applied make the world a better place, not just in thought but in application. The loss of his powers did not change that thing about him. And amazingly and interestingly, that's exactly what Deku was, and that's exactly why Deku was chosen, is because maybe a bigger question, and a more important question in the whole hero thing, which admittedly is confusing because hero means so many different things in the show simultaneously, is not just what do you do with your power, but what do you do when you have no power? Like, who are you when your back is against the wall? What are your actions actually connected to? And I think that that might be one possible reading even of Deku being gifted powers for his virtues. Because maybe one way to look at that is that that is actually the real source of power. That is actually the real source of strength. It's not sort of circumstance or where one is or one's natural abilities. It's something sort of self-cultivated through dreams or ideals or something like that and then adhere to despite difficulty. Bakugo is someone who has really really highly prioritized natural ability and, and like physical strength and that will make him someone of great importance in hero society. It will make him very capable. It won't make him All Might. So for that reason, I feel like Deku wins. Not just spiritually, but in the actual physical fight. Although it's still possible that Bakugo wins in some battle sense, but figures out the lesson. That's really what's at stake here. Deku versus Kachan, part two. You really want to do this? Right, Deku doesn't have as much motivation for this. He has a lot more to lose and not a lot to gain, because he's sort of already aligned. Well, that was a very powerful opening move. You know your problem, He's not you're messing around. Overthinking things. Just fight me! <laughs> there's there's just so much to stake for Bakugo. Oh no. Speaking of stakes. Your students are loitering at ground Oh no, you woke up Aizawa from his sleep? You know the man needs to sleep, he's not sleeping. What is he doing? He's grading tests? Who would be stupid enough to sneak out? <laughs> You already know. You have to stop oh. this. Oh, what? 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 Is it a villain? I know just how much he meant to you when we were growing. I told you to wait! Ah, uh, but that is what's at stake for Deku. Bakugo is messed up in his way, and Deku can't stomach that. It's interesting to think about because one of the, you know, the main motivators for these characters and, and this fight even is they're trying to live up to their ideals. But in a way, Bakugo has been a very important source of that for Deku as well. He's someone he looks up to. And when you lean on people like that, you sort of rely on them to continue being that, that source of inspiration or whatever. You don't want to see them fall because that's a pillar for you. And so it makes a lot of sense why it means so much to, to Deku for Bakugo to sort of get back to form, you know, to sort of sink in with his actual greatness. 
guess, because there are a lot of things that are amazing about Bakugo, for sure. And of course, let's not forget Deku's number one quirk, which he had even before he met All Might, which is meddling. He is the most powerful meddler of all time, maybe competing with uh, Toru in Fruits Basket for the other slot right now. Another thing that's tricky about this for Bakugo is teasing out what's what, because it's possible that at this point, Deku actually is also just more powerful than him. It's not just value values based. Deku is a pretty amazing physical force. You were stuck to me. I couldn't get rid of you. No matter how much I tried, you kept coming back. Another reading of that is that there's there's something that Baku is trying to shut out, you know, mentally. We both <laughs> Foreshadowing so in the form of trading cards. I'd say you certainly have the ability to become a pro hero. Wow, in hindsight, that must have been so amazing for him. I don't think I realized it at the time. You're not the only one who has feet. <laughs> you got so much better. And I destroyed all my This is because of me that he ended up losing his power. Oh my god, no. No, I didn't even I didn't even think about it. My fault, but this. Said anything. No one thinks that. No, not one person thinks that except for Bakugo. So what the hell am I supposed oh to do? Oh my god. Oh my god. This is this is way better than I expected. This is really why he invited Deku. It wasn't to beat him in a fight. <laughs> I mean, it probably is all those things too, but I feel like seeing this, it's sort of the Todoroki thing where he's just looking for someone to connect to and he's aware that Deku is the one for that and this is just his maybe even subconscious way of facilitating this conversation. If this is the way he's feeling, this is awful. I mean, he's just carrying this alone. There's no one he talks to at all about this stuff. So he's working it out in like the most Bakugo way imaginable of let's battle and then I'm going to cry during the battle. <laughs> This adds a whole other element, a whole other layer. I it would be. Yeah, tell me about it, for real. It didn't really matter who won or lost. <laughs> Even so. We're still gonna battle, though. Give the people what they want. This is what love looks like. <laughs> I say as Deku smacks him across the, the face with his foot. I'm going all out. I refuse to be your punching bag, Kachan. Let's go! Well, there you go. There you go. Give him some strength. Give him some structure. To vent his emotions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And fighting was the only way he knew how. Yeah, right, right. I'm more with this fight now. Our relationship to one another was totally screwed up. <laughs> yeah. Yes, indeed. We never talked about how we really felt. This is major turning point. Uh, there's no way this doesn't change a lot. Deku is so smart to like not butter him up with sympathy. It is said to like match his energy. You know, I don't know. It's, there's something so great about that. Oh, damn. Not even an explosion, just a, just a gut punch. Railing breaking gut punch. <laughs> no matter how much I beat you up, you keep coming back! It's obvious you've always looked down on me! That's not... We were kids. How did you get that reading? That's just projection. Total projection. You had so much going for you that I didn't have. All Might was my hero, but you were the one actually in my life! He's faster than before. <laughs> He pumped himself up. My continuous whole body limit had been raised to 8%. Hey, there you go. I wanted to see what you'd become. That's the reason I kept chasing after you. Beautiful. It's pretty amazing. It's just such a beautiful fight, and it's such a beautiful little speech from Deku. The love and admiration he has for Bakugo is obvious, but I think what's less obvious is the fact that it's not always easy to be in that situation. Like, the million and one times Deku watched that All Might video, I imagine was a very strange mix of emotions for him of, like, awe, hope, and inspiration, and also pain. Like, to look towards something like the highest level of, of whatever it is that resonates with you is to sort of have, like, a very bright light shown on what you're not. And I think a lot of times what separates separates people from people who actually can crack themselves open and get to maybe not that ideal state, but an ideal state is maybe partly at least the ability to look that dead in the eye, you know, like there actually is something that I want, you know, there actually is something that I think I could be. And then through that pain to sort of have the humility to start from the first rung, which is incredibly painful to do, especially when you are looking at this thing at the, at the highest rung. And so I think a very common reaction to that is to kind of create tunnel vision for the things one is already sort of naturally gifted at, or the, the way things sort of already are, a preference for what is not as painful. So I think in a sense, Deku and Bakugo have those two different approaches. Like Deku Deku is probably in the greatest amount of pain at the beginning of the show, having just full understanding of the, the power and magnitude of who All Might is and just the, the glorious man, the glorious superhuman that he represents. And then looking at his friend Bakugo, who actually has the, the natural ability Deku lacks in order to become
become like All Might. And instead of becoming bitter and resentful, he just tries to get as close as he can to them. He just tries to latch himself onto their positive qualities in the hope that he could be the best he can be. Then you have Bakugo, who, like I said, has that ability, and who is very, very aware of that ability, who sees the things he lacks in Deku, but shuts it out. Like, I think there's a very clear metaphor of Bakugo running away from Deku. Deku also is an ideal. It's just not one that he was able to articulate for himself. And that perhaps is one of the reasons why Deku is where he is, and Bakugo is not where he is. It's like the ability to not be crushed by the pain of it. The realities of life versus dreams of life. Circumstance versus ideals. And a desired state versus the actual state. And on another note, back to Bakugo's guilt, it seems to me like he's struggling with intense feelings of unworthiness. Or he's sort of operating on two channels, where he has this narrative of, I'm really gifted, and so I'm the one who's worthy. And then this other very strong undercurrent that he can't ignore, that is sort of creating a lot of conflict for him, that's, who am I to deserve this? And even with this power, will I ever be all might? And the answer right now is no. And that also rings very true to me. You know, I think that that's a trap a lot of people fall in, especially gifted people, as I spoke about before in Bakugo's origin story, where, you know, you have certain innate gifts, and people will praise you for those gifts, and there's there's a hole you can fall into where you think that's who you are and that's sort of the ideal or that you are perhaps better than others to have been born with those things and then to over identify with with certain traits like capability or intelligence or one's socioeconomic status you know those things will ultimately be hollow they'll ultimately be empty and they're not things you can lean on very much because they are at best tools for something greater which is just life and it's my opinion that there are higher forms of life that come about through just greater connection to what one is doing and to really understanding oneself and trying to match the reality of the world and living a good life in that rather than just changing one's perception artificially of what the world is to make oneself seem better than is actually the case if that makes sense and that's something I think so much about not even in relation to gifts necessarily but just in in relation to a lot of the messages we get where I feel like there's not enough focus on earning it there's not enough focus on earning value and meeting your own expectations right it's we're sort of buffered from that a lot by being told that we're just amazing just by virtue of our birth which is true but also not the complete story and I think that's partly why why that rings so hollow and why ultimately that just never really works. I mean, if that works, everybody would be thrilled with their lives, right? It's like, we've all been told we're special. Why do we not feel that way intrinsically? It's because there's something more to be gained. And that's something like waking up to one's own responsibility in life, waking up to one's own potential, waking up to what one actually genuinely wants for oneself, not just leaning on inherited ideas, and then doing the hard work to, to make all those things match in a very directed, self-directed and conscious manner. That is something that takes work and has to be earned. And so in a sense, that is often more satisfying in my opinion. And that's part of what makes all these students so great in 1A is that they, you know, for the most part are all working towards something like that, a very, very self-directed vision of what it means to be great. You know, we can substitute hero for like just great person for our purposes, but some of them are better than that at others. And I think Deku is one of maybe the most advanced in that way. And Bakugo is maybe one of the least advanced in that way. Hence this weird, like ideological tornado that's forming between multiple currents of matching sort of ability and strength with like self-awareness and ideals. I wasn't Watch out for this, for this epic level of speed. Kick. <laughs> from a continuous 5% to 8% isn't going <laughs> like to change in the long run. Deku's biggest struggle seems to be like just managing his own power. You passed me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He he has realized. And the epic the epic fight continues. I feel like Aizawa was going to, you know, be the one to break this up. Whoa, 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 whoa. What was that? Speaking of tornadoes. Is that all you got? That's speed though. Music is great. Admit something like this to your face. <laughs> I'll just inner monologue it. The idea of victory is so tied to the image of you in my head that in those moments I can't help but imitate you. Tell him this. Tell him. I feel like this would be great for him to hear. See, Bakugo deeply respects Deku too. So hearing that would, I feel like, absolve some of his issues. The only reason I'm using my kicks is so my arms don't get too abused. But I never said I couldn't use them at <laughs> That's true. I mean, he's still got arms, right? I mean, for now. Use the arms you have for now. Oh, okay. Now, it's your turn. I have to, in order to meet the expectations that all of you Deku's opinion about this fight did a total 180. He's like, let's not do this, Bakugo. And now it's like, the world is at stake. The fate of the world. Deku's skill. Connecting with his, his activities. <laughs> his true quirk. If you're Aizawa, do you, what do you do? I mean, you stop them or you let them have it. I feel like I'd watch for a bit. Azawa has good, good awareness. He might realize this is important. We're done here. I won this fight. Wait for it. Wait for it. How could you lose? Stop this right now. 
both of you. Oh, All Might himself. I was expecting Aizawa. All Might was watching for a bit. <laughs> you were someone who could already fight. So I decided that he should have a chance to stand in the ring. That explanation was somewhat unsatisfying. This is not your fault, young Bakugo. I was always going I'm to having lose a Google hunting power. moment here. It's not your fault. It's not your fault. It's not your fault. I focus <laughs> too much on your physical strength. Right, right, right. That's that much is clear. Oh. Sometimes I forget that you're children. <laughs> right? Yeah, it's it's hard hard to keep that in mind sometimes with all they've been through and all the all the amazing qualities they have. Both of those feelings are necessary in a hero. Right, right. They're they're that's great for each other. If they could only just so much, young Midoriya. Yes, right. And I know that's why you've always feared his heart and spirit, young Bakugo. Right. It's a form of respect. It's not actually hatred. I've no doubt you'll become the ultimate heroes, winning and saving people at the same time. All Might lay in facts here. And, you know, if we're really having a broader perspective on it, Bakugo doesn't need to have All Might's powers. He doesn't need to be chosen by All Might to be All Might like, you know, to, to ma match the ideals. Another thing I've been thinking about a lot recently is I realized that for a long time I was getting lost when it came to dreams because I was focusing too much on a very, very specific vision without realizing that it wasn't the, the specifics that were important. It was the underlying traits or feelings that those things gave me or things I wanted to prove to myself. It can be really tough to isolate and get at what's what. You know, I think we make dreams and we, we put a certain face on them and the faces it can be people it can be very specific careers it can be like a, a very crystal clear image but the reality is there are probably a lot of different things that would satisfy us in the same way as those very clear images and so it becomes a matter of actually being clear on what it is about those things that are so enticing and then finding sort of like the most natural path to them and the more i think that way the more options that frees up for me and the more naturally i feel i slip into things that are good for me in life Here's a very strange example that's not exactly what I'm talking about. It's just a way of framing the the different ways of looking at it, okay? It's like, just imagine that you're you're in the mood for love, right? You're looking for a relationship and there's one specific person. There's this dream partner that you, you have met or that you're aware of. You recognize on some level that this person would be a, an amazing fit and so the obsession or the fixation becomes about that person. The chances of success with that one person are probably low, just given, you know, just general human tendencies and the fact that human hearts are fickle and there are just so many circumstances that that are obstacles in, in natural life, right? However, if you make the goal not about that person, that exact person, and instead make the goal about, I'm looking for a good relationship, or I'm looking for someone that will satisfy my desires for love in this way, your chances of success are a lot greater. In fact, I would argue almost guaranteed, given enough time and just, you know, effort put into it. Because now you're dealing not with this one person, you're dealing with like humanity. And the chances of you getting what you need from someone in all of humanity are just way, way, way greater. And while that's not the best example, I feel like it's that focus that's important. It's that shifting of the lens where in careers as well, or in future dreams, it doesn't have to be that specific vision. There are plans C through Z, you know, the more the focus becomes on the result for oneself rather than the image or picture that's, you know, sort of stamped on top of the whole thing, the greater flexibility there is, the easier I think that is to find. So back to Bakugo, he has this very, very particular story about All Might. And it's kind of easy to understand why Deku is such a point of jealousy right now. But if you're really zoomed out, if you really are trusting in the fact that you can get what you need and that what you need is available, even if it's not in the form you, you first thought, you can see, I think, that the path for Bakugo is actually almost assured. Like the path for him to be this ultimate hero is pretty much guaranteed. It's just not All Might. And that's okay. He can meet his own expectations. He can get what he needs from it. He can be who he wants to be from it. And he can do great things. And it's only the attachment to the story, to a, one particular story, that would make that not be sufficient. That would make that be a problem, I think. Thank you, All Might. Damn it. Daddy All Might always saving everyone all the time in so many you. different ways. <laughs> ah, but it is, though. That's why he brought this whole thing up. He's aware of it on some level. Don't you dare lose again. <laughs> It is kind of cool that he won. Uh, that surprised me a little bit. This is the beginning of a new era of beauty. Don't worry, your secret's safe with me. I definitely trust Bakugo with secrets. I mean, he's not on. the most, like, Unlike Deku, you know, loose-lipped person. Mouth shut. <laughs> now that it's come to this, I can explain what's happened between me and young Midoriya. Maybe you can include Bakugo in your, your subsequent beach training <laughs> that surely will come soon. So How he was gravely turned injured, out well, I think. Which limited his strength. And finally... How he chose his successor. Yes. And, and also a great gift for Bakugo, even if it's not what he anticipated. There's something great for him probably about now being in All Might's inner circle. I mean, I think I would feel good about that and that would mitigate some of the, the left outness that I feel. Well, I can do the exact same thing and keep getting better myself. Yep. I'll go higher than even you, chosen one. Right, right. And the a big change is that now he can actually look it in the eye. 
They've become proper rivals now, in a way that they weren't before. Right. There's definitely something transformative about this episode. It, it feels like things have become unblocked. Became some unblocked chi or something. Three of us shared. Yeah, yeah, Bakugo is now, he's different. This was a Bakugo growth episode, largely. You fought the night you finished the preliminary <laughs> hero licensing Here's exam. Here's the, the punishment. I'm glad to see that you two have so much energy. You interrupted my grading. I understand they're at the practice field. Yes. Oh, it was all my... Before you went. Let them have it. Let them have it out. Will you leave them to me for now? I'll bring them back. <laughs> That's fault. kind of great. I love their, their budding friendship, or not budding, but they're a great duo, these two. Figure out a way to heal yourselves! <sighs> I like how even All Might's terrified of Aizawa's wrath. <laughs> Interesting way to end the episode. What? After credit scene. This is gonna be legendary. This is gonna be forever talked about in the school. The urban legend will grow. It's kind of hard to put into words. You're lucky you, you know got away with house arrest. Anything. Though this does mean you'll miss the opening ceremony we're going to right Talamita. now. Talamita's hands. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Time for heartfelt something. About my shoot style. What did you think of it? <laughs> Big moment. Throwing out a casual conversation topic. are too obvious. Ooh. And when you added in punches, it really pissed me off. <laughs> Got it. Excellent. Excellent. I love it. <laughs> Easily one of the, the, the best episodes I'd say of the show so far. It's been a long time coming and, and building. It's really gratifying. It does feel like something huge has been gained. It was just a, you know, kind of a... I can't really call it a petty squabble because it's like this epic battle, but you know, you get what I mean. It's not a villain. It's just two, two people fighting as maybe a very intense form of sparring. But there's just so much behind it and so much that Bakugo needed and we needed for Bakugo. And just super important for the whole concept of like aspiring to be the best and being heroes and self-honesty and the ease of hating things that are, are good because those good things create a threat in some way. Going back to what I was just saying about the bigger picture, right? And not hyper fixating on one very clear image of what success means or, or what the things we want are. I have had this hunch for a while and, and it grows increasingly stronger as I watch the show that none of them are gonna be the greatest hero or they all will be. It doesn't really make sense anymore or doesn't necessarily have to be the All Might model. I mean, it could be, but it almost seems like the show has built in problems to the All Might model. It was a thing that was perfect for its time and was sort of a stage in the evolution of hero and in society. But repeating the same thing, it rarely works just for so many reasons. And one of them is just that a lot of times the solutions are particular to the, the circumstances under which the problems arise. And we're now living in different circumstances due to the events of the show and other things. And so perhaps the solution is for exactly what the, the committee was talking about behind the exam, where you have a collection of very strong heroes. You no longer have people gunning for the top slot. You have people actually working together in cohesion and in harmony towards a common purpose. And perhaps that purpose actually is the thing that's most satisfying. It's not the fame or fortune or ideals or being the number one thing. One piece of evidence in that regard is I think that Endeavor is maybe an example of Bakugo taken to a full career, where it's all about that slot. Even if Endeavor isn't the number one slot, the the way he is, it's hard to imagine him being thrilled with his life, you know? It's hard to imagine him being suddenly a great person just because he achieves his dreams. There's something missing. And similarly, All Might is not really concerned with being number one. All Might is concerned with doing things that he feels are good, like helping the world and reducing crime and making people happier and, and better in their lives. So if we're zooming out and looking at what actually the goals are, what are the things that are strong and are satisfying and feel good, there's really not that much need that I can see for this like one hero only and this ranking, this category of, of things, even though that's, you know, also a government government type thing. It easily could be a League of Heroes type thing of Deku, Bakugo, Todoroki, everyone in Class 1A basically. And even if some of them are more powerful than others, you know, even if some of them have powers that lend themselves less to helping in battle like Invisible Girl, it almost doesn't matter if their, their goals are aligned correctly because they all can be a part of it and they all can do good things and they all can, can really be connected to their lives and, and to doing good. So this episode feels like a major, major step towards that for Bakugo and in the process sort of a clear application of some of those ideas which feels good to me. It feels great. And just as someone who likes character development in the direction of self-honesty and self-realization, this was some really powerful stuff. It was really satisfying to watch Bakugo sort of have this breakdown after all this buildup that he's been experiencing for just his entire life, basically. And that Deku was able to be that backbone for him while also learning in the process. So that's the end of this amazing episode. Before the video ends, I have to give a very, very special thank you to all my, my patrons for all the constant love and support for making these videos possible. And just in general, for being the, the greatest people to ever walk the face of the earth. This week, a special shout out to those who joined the top tier on Patreon. 
Run Out Joy, Anthony Mistretta, Ramzin19, Murphew, Loon, and Simoskita. Thank you to you guys. Thank you to all my patrons. Thank you to everybody for watching. Love you guys as always, and I'll see you guys very soon for the final two episodes of Season 3, amazingly. Thank you.